you see when you see this? If you're like me, you think of Bambi, the Walt Disney character Bambi. What a great, playful animal, Bambi. What about when you see this? Well, if you're like me, you may be thinking of meat in the freezer, another meal. You may be thinking of trophy on the wall. Tonight, we're going to talk about white-tailed deer population management. Urban and suburban areas alike are challenged by simply overlooking the damage or the impact these animals can have on the environment just by the mere attraction of these animals. They are beautiful animals. I have always enjoyed nature, both hunting and fishing. I uh, hunted these animals for over 30 years, and today I still pass this tradition on to my children and hope that they carry it on to generation after generation. The purpose of white-tailed deer population management is to regulate the population size, regulate the negative effects on the ecosystem, and maintain the integrity of other populations. So tonight, we're going to explore some of the current methods of monitoring and controlling the population as well. So let's dig into the details. <clears throat> so first, you, must be, you may be asking yourself, why is this important to me? And what sort of impact can this have on me personally? So first, before we dig into that, let's dig into the history of the population of the whitetail. <clears throat> the Association of Fish and Wildlife agencies provided us with data uh, where they monitor the, the population. So you'll notice that due to unregulated hunting practices in the 1930s, population had dipped below 500,000. It's actually estimated to be 300,000. In 2018, that number had risen to 30 million in the population. The carrying capacity, which means what the habitat will support, is actually 2.4 million. So that's where we should be. That's what, that's what the habitat can support in the United States. <clears throat> so let's talk more about the effects. The main concern that we typically find are the most noticeable is deer vehicle collisions. And what we'll see is that in Princeton, New Jersey, in the 1970s, Princeton, New Jersey implemented a no firearm discharge law, which resulted in a 436% increase in deer vehicle collisions. So it is a safety concern as well as, well as an expense concern of cost. <clears throat> there are over 1 million annual reported accidents of deer vehicle collision accidents at an average cost of $6,717. Since 1990, the human fatality rate is up over 140, 100, excuse me, 104%, which actually is of all wildlife, but mostly and primarily deer vehicle collisions. The auto accidents involving deer result in the death of the deer 92% of the time. Another concern of, of an impact on the environment is transmitting of Lyme disease. Uh, which it can be a fatal disease. The white-tailed deer is actually also considered a keystone herbivore. And what that means is they can alter the landscape and the vegetation in the wild, not only in the wild, but also in urban and suburban areas alike. The National, excuse me, the National Agricultural, Agricultural Statistics Services estimate that crop damage in 2001 was $765 million dollars. And as I mentioned earlier, urban and suburban households alike are challenged by the damage to landscape and ornamental plants and how that results in a reduction of wildlife in that area as well. <clears throat> Not only that, urban environments pose challenges for city leaders and the best solutions to control or monitor the population in those areas. So now that we have discussed the effects of overpopulation, let's take a look at how we monitor the population and a few different ways there. First, there are estimates done by a particular sample area of the landscape in a particular area. Primarily, that is done aerial, aerially by a helicopter. And helicopter seems to be the most efficient and most effective way to determine sex of the deer as well as the age of the deer. <clears throat> there are ground counts that are done, typically done by horseback or by motorized vehicle. 
and those are obviously not as uh, effective as the aerial counts. As we know how fish and wildlife agencies are able to track and monitor the population, let's also consider the methods of controlling population. There's regulated hunting that we discussed earlier in the most effective way. Over six million deer per year are killed by hunters. There's methods of sharpshooting when hunting is limited. And then there's also methods of live capture. So in summary, <clears throat> we talked about an increased population over a thousand fold in less than a hundred years. We talked about the harmful effects in the environment, the impact on other wildlife and plant life, and as well we discussed methods of controlling. And while I'm no different than anyone else out there, deer are a beautiful animal and I certainly love to hunt, but let me leave you with this. In 1963, Dick Emory said this, Oh, you are awful, but I like you. And maybe that's how we feel about the white-tailed deer. Or maybe it's just the opposite. Thank you.